guys, welcome to a new series on my channel, Cook and Chat With Me. I've been wanting to do cooking videos. I'm by no means a pro, uh, but I can talk. So I think this will be fun. Have to make myself a little drink before we start. I'm gonna do some kombucha. My drink of choice. It's the Better Booch Kombucha Premium Small Craft Morning Glory. Love that. If you're wondering, oh Kenzie, what's back there? the banana bread that I, or no, it's the pumpkin bread that I already baked today. You could say I'm a bit of a, like a Martha Stewart, if you will. It's one of the best noises. I always like prepare a kombucha, if you will, as if I'm drinking wine. I'm not the biggest wine drinker. I do like specific wines, like I like Aveline. Um, I'm very picky. But I love kombucha. Okay, so I asked her questions and I'm actually gonna be making my favorite soup that I make all the time. It's the first time I'm making it this season. Also, I just wanted to say, unfortunately, I am not the one who created this soup. As much as I would love to take credit, um, and as though I feel like I accidentally have, because I get tagged in stories of people making the soup all the time. Unfortunately, I didn't actually make the soup. I got this recipe from the Modern Proper. I just make it like literally all the time. It's everyone's favorite recipe that I make or every soup that I make. And I love making soup and I cook for friends all the time. And this is by far the fave. Cooking classes, they tell you you're supposed to keep it like that. I hope to God um, my cooking teacher isn't watching this because he'd be very disappointed. I'm actually enrolled to take a knife skills class right now so I can learn how to properly use my knife. How do you not stress about finding a partner? LOL, I'm struggling. Okay, so there are times where I will stress sometimes and I will say I really feel like I was stressing which is so, so crazy and stupid looking back on it. I'm also only 25 now. I'm not dating, I'm not even almost dating, I'm not even like, I don't have a crush on anyone that like I miss having crushes on people, but uh, it's really hard to find someone that is even worthy of a crush these days. And I'm not even like looking for much, you know? But like not even nothing, nothing at all. Okay, but anyways, I remember I was in a relationship that was like really serious. And after we broke up and gave him mind, I was 22, I think when we broke up, he was older than me, but I was 22. And that's when, you know, you think you have your whole life figured out, like whatever. By the way, guys, I'm going to a next skills class, so I don't need anyone to like comment about how I'm cutting this, okay? Like it's stressing me out and I'm performing worse because I'm filming myself. I remember at 22 feeling like, oh my God, I'm single, which is so stupid. I know how crazy this is now, but this is how I felt then and I'm just sharing. I remember feeling really stressed out thinking like, oh my God, I, like it's so late. How am I ever gonna find someone? I actually don't really know what it was because like I can't even picture myself leaving with someone right now. Um, but at that time I felt really stressed out and it was more so like a time thing that was driving me insane. So I'm not trying to give you guys a toxic positivity answer. So don't be mad at me by this. But I will also say before I give this answer, I have also had a couple like longer term boyfriends. So I'm coming at it from that way. And if you are someone who's like never dated or never had a boyfriend or anything like that, um, one, it is like totally, totally, totally normal. Um, and it's also like totally fine to want a partner. I feel like that's also like, for some reason, there's like a lot of shame that's been put on that. I think it's like great to like, like being alone, but it's totally fine to want a partner. Like that is not a bad thing. Um, by the way, I'm using my Our Place pan. It's the best thing ever. Obsessed with this thing. I like to think of my life, and I've talked about this in my podcast, I like to think about it from the perspective of me 10 years from now, because 10 years from now, I'm just, I will be in a healthy, great relationship, um, right? And if it's like Kinsey at 35, looking back on Kinsey at 25, I will be really sad for my 25 year old self if I sat around and waited, my eyes are watering from that, you know? If I sat around and waited and I was like sad, non-stop about not having a partner when like the partner was on their way. Like it was gonna happen regardless. There was nothing I could do to like stop it. Does this make sense? So it helps me be a lot more present. And by the way, I'm using minced garlic. I'm not chopping garlic right now. It's just like not my journey. I've been getting more into it, you know, with my cooking classes, but basically I just try to think of my 35 year old self who's like happy and content and has that relationship and focus on that so that I'm thinking like, oh, it's gonna happen regardless. I might as well make the most of it right now. And also not waste my time like wishing that I was somewhere else because like, it's going to happen when it's like meant to happen, which is cheesy and annoying. And like, I feel like that might be toxic positivity. 
Um, but that is what works for me, and I look at it like now in my life, if I was, tw like, okay, for instance, 25 right now. I look back at my like 20 year old self, and I wish that I wouldn't have been so stressed out about things so far in the future because they happened anyways and like me stressing out at that time didn't help at all in fact it like really hurt me so i try to do that and that's how i don't stress out about not finding finding a partner but sometimes i do just inevitably dating life updates there are literally none okay i've added in the italian sausage i have garlic and onions i'm gonna saute these for about five minutes how do you budget honestly um i don't which is not good i do invest and i do save but I don't have like a set monthly budget. I'm just like not on that level of organization. And also budgeting gives me anxiety, which like really doesn't make sense because you would think that if I had a budget, it would, it would like, relieve me of anxiety. And I'm sure it would, but yeah, I'm, I don't know. I need to do that. How many of you guys have a budget? Like, I don't know. I also forgot how easy this soup is to make. Um, So this is gonna be shorter than I thought. How to deal with outgrowing your old BFF. I don't want to break up with her. So this is like the worst pain in the entire world. It sucks because there's nothing that either of you could have done most likely in order for this to not happen. So a lot of the time, I think even people that you've grown up with or friends that you've had for years, even just like a couple of years in your twenties that you've been close with or college or whatever, as you get older, like inevitably you grow apart. And you not inevitably, but oftentimes you grow apart and you have different interests and you don't really connect anymore and it just like feels kind of forced and awkward. And this is like literally the worst thing ever. It's not like a fun thing at all. If I'm sitting here too thinking about what like the best advice to give would be, it almost feels like it needs to be one of those things where it's like, have a conversation. Sometimes people just grow apart and that is okay. And you don't always have to have conversations. I recorded an episode with a few episodes with like friendship coaches and stuff and they're big on communication but sometimes like conversations don't have to be had and like things just fizzle out and that's inevitable. Um, but I would really recommend like trying to find friends that are in your like similar life phase. So if you are the friend who is single and all of your friends are dating, you really need to find single friends in my opinion because being around that, if that's something that really bothers you, can be really miserable. So uh, I don't know, I just think it's like similar life phases. And I'm lucky right now, again, going back to not stressing out that much about not finding someone. One, I'm only 25 and then two, none of my friends are dating. So I'm sure we will be having another conversation if in a few years all my friends are dating and I'm the only one who isn't. Um, that's like obviously like not the most fun thing ever. Will there be a podcast tour? So I would love to eventually do a podcast tour, maybe in the next couple years, but we do have a DAS live show. Margo is our guest again. That is November 11th. You guys can get tickets down below. It's gonna be really fun. It's at an even bigger venue. It's at the factory. I'm very excited. So if you guys are in Dallas, you need to come. Favorite fall perfume. Okay, there was one that I loved and then Keaton loved it. Mason Margiela, like, fireplace, or what was it? I need to go get it again because we were obsessed with it. I will have it on the screen here. It was so good. Okay, when do you see yourself getting married? So many things about relationships. Well, seeing as how I'm incredibly single right now, not for a long time, um, realistically, probably in my 30s. Thoughts on New York Fashion Week, were you invited? So, New York Fashion Week is also one of those things where you get invited last minute. So, like, I got some invites super last minute, but I'm not in New York. Not that I think I should be invited, but I'm not like a New York influencer in the city going to Fashion Week. I've been before when I was younger, I went one year and it was fun. Um, it definitely is like very overwhelming and I would like need to like mentally prepare, but it's like such a cool opportunity, obviously. How is the Okine going? What challenges have you faced that you weren't expecting? Um, the Okine is my clothing brand, if you guys didn't know. It's going great. Um, a, I'm trying to think of uh, production's been a big thing. We have a new drop in October. We'll have two drops of new of three new products before the end of the year so we do have one in october and then we'll have one in november or december that i'm really excited about um it's just i don't know i was expecting all of the issues because i asked so many friends who have brands so nothing like unexpected it's just like things took a lot longer you know Okay, so that takes a couple minutes, and then you'll add in your can of crushed tomatoes, 14 ounces, not 28. 
And then you'll do tomato paste and chicken stock. And then that simmers for 15 minutes. Like this is literally the easiest soup to ever, you could ever make. Next question was, is there something about your job you really don't like? And I love my job. Like I'm so lucky that I can call this job. This isn't even like about the job necessarily. This is more about like a insecurity within myself kind of thing. But I sometimes will get like super in my head about YouTube. Oh no, this is really, really not good. Okay, I'm gonna do this off camera, but you want two tablespoons of tomato paste. Okay, and then chicken broth. Anyways, it's not like, oh my God, it's not like I played out my job. It's more so myself, but I will just get super in my head when I'm filming. Like I feel like you could even see it earlier in this video where I'm like, this isn't good. Especially if I'm not like, sometimes I'm just in a really funny mood and then sometimes I'm not. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm not funny. No one cares about me. No one likes the videos. I, this is so boring, whatever. Like even earlier before this, I was like, should I just stop filming? Like in my head as I'm filming the videos, just thinking that they're like not good enough or like I, they could be better on like another day or like, I don't know, comparing myself to other people's videos. Just like overall, sometimes I'll get really in my head when it comes to YouTube specifically. And I think that's because it's the platform that I started on. I've talked to a lot of other creators and like the platform I always struggle the most with is the one that they started on. So I don't know, I've been on YouTube for like 10 years at this point. I don't know, um, but I definitely like really hard on myself in my videos. I'm like, they're not good. People hate me, people don't like them, like blah, 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 whatever. Um, which I feel like all of us feel that in like other areas of our lives. So obviously it's not the only one that I feel that way, but uh, I wish it was. No, but I feel like mainly it is YouTube. And then other days I feel totally fine and confident and I love my videos and I feel great. So I don't know, I feel like that's just like, being a human being, like, I don't, I really don't know. Has a celebrity been in your DMs lately? No, but I feel like it defines what you, or it depends on what you define as a celebrity. That's a comment or the question of the day. Comment below what you define as a celebrity. I'm assuming it's probably people who are like, not famous from the internet, or like have a following on the internet or whatever, but let me know. Am I going to ACL? I don't think that I am. I'm gone pretty much all of October, I'm going. To Nashville next week, get back early October. Then I go to New York, and then I have to go back to Nashville, really, Knoxville, not Nashville, for a wedding. So I don't think so. That's actually so soon. Okay. Favorite part of living in Dallas? My friends, probably. I also just love everything in the city. Like, I, it's my ideal place to live. Going through post breakup and trying to heal any solo dates. Love you so much. Love you too. I need to get back on this, but I'm about to tell you. So I started doing the artist way, which is like a 12 week course. You do morning pages every single morning. You read this book, it's Julia Cameron. And then you take yourself on a solo artist date once a week. And I got to like week five and then I was traveling and then I just totally like missed it. Also fits literally, guys, hold on one second. When I'm cooking, he just like stares at me like that for hours. Anyways. And then I got off the wagon and I really need to get back on because I really loved it. Anyways, good solo dates. I like going to coffee shops. Oh, you know what I really like if you're in Dallas or really anywhere? Find a bar bookstore in Dallas called Wild, Wild Detectives. And oh my God, sitting at the bar and reading your Kindle, there's really nothing like it. You can do it anywhere, obviously, but it's cool if it's like a bookstore environment too because like everyone's reading. It's just like a little more chill. But I love going and sitting at a bar and reading. I do that more when I'm traveling than I do at home though. I like taking myself on like solo lunch dates. Um, it's way less scary than you think. I want to start going on solo movie dates. I really want to go to my favorite museum in Dallas, which is the Sixth Floor Museum by myself. Um, and I'm not a huge museum person, but I want to start going solo. Going on walks, taking yourself to like Pilates class, taking yourself on a date to the farmer's market. I mean like literally anything that you like to do solo. It's just, it's incredible. Someone asked, how much money do you make? And I think it's a very invasive question. On the other hand, I get it and I get people ask. And then again, I also think that like being financially transparent is really helpful. One second, I need to get salt. All right, I'm salting this and then I'm bringing it to a simmer. And once it's simmering, I'm gonna set a timer for 15 just cause I'm filming, but I normally don't do this. Um, I read Jason Tardick's book and I had him on the podcast and he just talked about financial transparency and how it's really important and it's really great for women. And I think it's a good thing when you're with people who are in the same industry as you. The only people you're hurting by not sharing income and things like that is yourself. It's really set up to like protect your employer so that you don't ask for a raise or you don't leave for better pay and things like that. I do think it's helpful when it's within the same industry and I actually think it's great and he made an even better point. He was like, especially women, they really need 
this because it, um, because obviously there is a pay gap. Guys, also, look at this. I cannot believe I haven't been wearing this the entire time. I actually shot it today. Comes out, I think, on November 3rd. Red Wedding Housewife home. Get excited. Um, okay. So we have like a minute left. My next question is, what are you excited for for the rest of the year? Well, let me just tell you. We have a beautiful year ahead. We have a new album, Taylor Swift. We have a new book from Colleen Hoover. Is my lip gloss messed up? It's been better. Okay, um, what else we have? We have a Dallas live show. We have Dallas book club that I'm starting, which will be on November 18th. We have the Dallas live show on November 11th. We have a lot of travel in October. I'm trying to stay home in November, December, maybe a New Year's Eve trip. What else do we have? Let me see. Oh, I want to start a garden. I'm excited to get back into cooking soups. I'm just excited for it to be cold. Bar season is the best this time of year. Like you can't, you can't argue with me on, okay, you know what? It's something crazy about me. You would have just seen that just now. Um, I just, I, I just touched it. Like I'm gonna burn myself. I currently have a burn on my thumb for that reason alone. It's looking good guys. Uh, I feel like I lost my mom for some reason. I have no patience, just gonna stop that. The bars at home, like in Dallas at least for me, are so much better. Also, all of this kale, when I put this in here, will turn into like this big. Just wait for it. Actually, I haven't even cut this kale, like what am I thinking? <laughs> Amateur, everyone. Um, okay, I don't know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna make it work. You know, here we are. Um, bars from like October to April, the energy is unmatched, especially in Dallas. Like I had the best like two or three months of my life from like October to December last year to the point where like when it was ending, I cried because I was like, no, like it's just not gonna be the same anymore because obviously thing, people are moving, you know, whatever, okay? I cried. So I need everyone to know how serious I am about that. This is the best time of year. It's the most fun. Everyone's home, it's cold. People are just like more likely and more down to go out. It's so much fun. And I am just looking forward to it. Like I really couldn't be happier and I couldn't be more excited. I am over binge drinking as a whole, like just heavy drinking. I don't know, we'll see. Like I like waking up not hungover, you know? So we'll see. Anyways, I'm adding in the kale. Gotta do a lot of kale here. It's not even honestly that much because I'm too lazy to like really, really cut today. This drink. So good. Okay, and then we want heavy cream. You're supposed to do like half a cup of this. You gotta just do what I want, you know? I made homemade tomato soup last week for my grandmother when she came over. It's just like the most wholesome thing I've ever said. Um, and it was, okay, this is a lot. I do put a lot more in this soup. There is a way to make this to where it's like a little bit healthier. Um, but I don't know, I just find that when I'm cooking, my meals from home. It doesn't even matter like how like nutritious it is maybe. That's the word I'm looking for. Oh, I put a lot of heavy cream in. Um, I also didn't put that much tomato paste in. So it is gonna look a little bit different and I put more bone broth or more chicken broth, but whatever. It actually looks like really different, I will be honest with you. The tomato paste and I are like not getting along and it turns out that makes a really big difference. I get this like five more minutes. Oh, it's looking, it's looking back to normal. This is literally the easiest soup in the entire world to make. Takes two seconds. Okay, let's see if we have more questions. See, now I'm kind of like getting back into the swing of things. Like I have a personality again. I just feel like I've lost my personality in the past like month or so. I keep saying like not funny, but like my, I just feel like my personality's gone. Guys, is anyone else still sad about Pete Davidson and Kim Kardashian? Like I know it's been so long. People have moved on, but like I haven't moved on. I'm actually very sad. That was. For a couple I really didn't think was real, I have never shipped to people more in my life. How to make friends in your 20s, I've always struggled making good friends. It, obviously making friends in your 20s is hard because it's the first time most likely you don't have friends like set in place, like with school. Some of us are not lucky enough to like love our coworkers. I feel like it's actually pretty rare to love your coworkers that much. Honestly, social media, like it, especially if you're in a new city, join my Geneva chat. We have room with group chats for every single city, like not every single city, but a lot of cities that you guys live in, um, especially if you live in Dallas or like New York or Houston, like there's a ton of them. Um, social media, I think, just reach out to people, especially on like TikTok, it, like it's really not weird, but there's a lot of social groups that are being made on TikTok in different cities or people. 
Um, I would really do that. And then also, to have a friend, you have to be a friend. So you might have to be the one that's like reaching out and making that effort for a while. And even if it's not someone who you think is like your forever friend, at least it's someone to like get you out there and you guys will like be friends. Every, okay, like that sounds easy, like ish. But like not every friend that you meet or hang out with is gonna be like your friend forever, you know what I mean? And I think sometimes we expect our new friends to feel like our hometown friends who have known us forever and obviously the feels and the vibes are gonna be very different and you're starting at ground zero. So I would, and you're starting at the bottom. Um, I would make an effort, find one person that you think that you can maybe be friends with, start going out to dinner with them and then maybe they have a group of friends and maybe move through them. Um, you have to put yourself out there. It is a very hard time. Thank you for talking about gaining weight. How are you dealing with like body changes in your 20s? So I mentioned this briefly in um, a vlog and I think in my 25th year, I have noticed way more than ever, like my body just changing, which is like totally normal and everyone's body goes through it and everyone feels that way. I actually heard the other day that it's like your body preparing you for childbirth. And I'm like, oh God, that's really scary. Um, it's a natural thing of life. And I always am so afraid to talk about body image online, honestly, because I'm just like, afraid that I'm gonna say the wrong thing or that, yeah, I guess I'm just like afraid that I'm gonna say the wrong thing and that I'm not like an expert in this field. So I always say like, go follow Eli and Victoria Garrick and those people who are really good. When I'm like more focused on wellness or like taking care of myself and that for me, a lot of that is like, I love my walks. I love working out not for the vanity of it. I like working out because it makes me feel better mentally and it's like I know I'm taking care of myself. Therefore, I like have a better relationship with myself almost because I'm taking care of myself, not because I'm working out to look a certain way. Um, even when I'm journaling or like I have good relationships, just things like that when I'm focusing on wellness in my life. I thought in cooking at home, like cooking is something that for whatever reason, I think again, it just goes back to like me telling myself I'm taking care of myself. And again, it's not about what I'm cooking. It's not about cooking chicken versus like, like it doesn't, it's not about cooking like healthy versus, I don't even want to say that in like deem food certain ways, but it's not even about what I'm cooking. It's just the fact that I'm taking the time to spend time with myself. And then I'm also taking the time to take care of myself. Um, and by taking care of myself, I just mean like nurturing myself, not in, I'm, I don't mean like I'm taking care of myself necessarily in like a super healthy way, if that makes sense. Um, I just find that, that has helped me a lot. Also, your clothes fit you, you don't fit your clothes. If you need a different size, that is okay. That is what clothing sizes are for. Like you are not better or worse because of your clothing sizes and just remembering that. When it first started happening to me, I was like, oh look, I don't really feel that great about that. And obviously we all have our insecurities, but um, those are just some things that have helped me and also again It is so normal for your body to do this and you shouldn't look like how you looked when you were 17 18 years old um, That just isn't realistic. So yeah, again, I'm like always so afraid to talk about this because For whatever reason, I think I'm gonna say the wrong thing. I can leave you with anything your clothes fit you You don't fit your clothes and it is so normal and everyone goes through it and it is okay It is totally fine See, I'm afraid when I'm saying that, even that though, I'm worried that it's like, but like you still were right. I, I don't know guys. I really, I'm like so afraid of, because I think I just care so much about how people feel about themselves that I would never want to affect that in like a negative way. Um, but I just find that the more time I'm like spending taking care of myself, emotionally, physically, mentally, what in every other way, uh, I just find that I have a better relationship with myself and then I'm stronger and that stuff like doesn't bother me as much if that makes sense It obviously bothers me and like things will bother me from time to time some days. I feel horrible some days I feel great like it's just Unfortunately normal especially being a girl. Um, this is my theory guys. I think like at first I thought I was getting a lot of weight Because my jeans weren't fitting me and then I thought maybe I just have a juicy ass now Like maybe that's what's happening because of Pilates and weightlifting and so that is my theory and that is like what I'm sticking with now, you know? Okay guys, the camera died on me and I'm not gonna lie to you, I am like two seconds away from stripping on camera because it is so hot outside and I just went to go see, I had to go outside and now I'm like, no, I actually can't do this anymore. So anyways, my soup, it looks incredible. Let me give you guys a little visual. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, it doesn't look as good as it normally does. And that is due to my lack of tomato paste. And I know, I know, I didn't have a choice. What was I supposed to do? 
feels a lot more like a soup than it, or like a pasta than it does a soup because of the tortellini. Um, but it is just so good. I actually, the one thing I prefer at Trader Joe's versus Sprouts is their Italian sausage. I prefer it for this soup, but I also got this from Sprouts. This is hard when you're the health queen, you know? Just kidding. Okay, I have my beautiful soup here. Look at how perfect. Ah, love it. Uh, and of course, you gotta add your red pepper flakes, and then you've gotta add Parmesan. And then you're like good to go with the best soup of your life that is so easy to make. Here we go. Look at me. I like a lot of Parmesan. It's so good. You guys will just be in heaven. And I still haven't finished my drink yet, which is typical. Here is my meal. Um, oh, I guess we're gonna answer one more question. One sec. Someone asked, what is your favorite ingredient when cooking? Um, I love when a soup has a carrot and celery base. I think that's what I'm gonna have to go with. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. This is actually really hot. I'm gonna go eat my dinner at literally like five, four, I think it is, um, 4.59 p.m. I am a grandmother. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you guys want to see more of these. Love you guys so much. Subscribe if you guys have it, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. I always, like, with everyone that I've dated, like, I've always tried to see if I could imagine some sort of, like, future yeah. with them. And, like, you always kind of are like, yeah, I guess. Like, sure. It'll be fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, like, with him, I met him, and it was just like, oh, like, everything just felt like at ease.